Um, so, welcome everyone. Um, Thursday, today we're um, glad to have Merdad Mirovai. Uh, Merdad um, defended his PhD at NYU in 2013 with Andrei Gruzinov. And after that, he was a member here at the IS. And then he was a senior, he was a junior, and you know, subsequently senior research scientist at ICTP, Priest. Um, and that works on a wide range of uh, topics that are spanning uh, string theory and uh, some formal aspects of inflation and all the way to CMP and large case structure. And today, Merdat is going to enlighten us on the shapes of non gaussianity in warm inflation. So, Merdat, please take it away. Thank you for the invitation. So, yes, I'm going to talk about this uh, work that I did with Andre Grusen. Uh, and then some ongoing, uh, ongoing work that I mentioned. Uh, so, yes, it's about warm inflation. So, let me start by giving you a review of. Uh, the standard uh, inflationary paradigm, so what I'm going to call cold inflation. So the, the standard inflation is a theory of initial condition. And what it uh, does is that it erases pre-existing initial conditions that we have. So it was, just, uh, it was for instance, invented to solve the um, horizon problem, the fact that we see a nearly homogeneous universe. So it erases the pre-existing uh, initial conditions that we might have before inflation. It uh, uh, and therefore classically produces a cold and empty universe. And then uh, it has this exciting feature that it stretches uh, UV fluctuations, vacuum fluctuations at very short distances to uh, be the origin of cosmological perturbations that we see. And that's really what we uh, like inflation. So it's a theory for the cosmological perturbations. Now, uh, what is the what is warm inflation? Warm inflation is uh, an idea that was uh, proposed at least in some primitive way already in the eighties. The idea is that you have uh, during inflation you have particle production. So in some uh, in some ways, it is similar to the original cold inflation, and in some ways, it differs. So first, it is also a theory of initial condition. It is also inflation, so you have an exponentially expanding universe. It does erase pre-existing um, uh, features. However, not universe is not going to be classically cold and empty, here you have continuous particle production, and therefore there will be a non-zero temperature, a non-zero number density of some other particles uh, during inflation. So an observer that lives there doesn't feel that it is empty. And moreover, the origin of the fluctuations that we observe are no longer vacuum fluctuations, but the thermal uh, fluctuations that uh, are controlled by the thermal physics at some microscopic scale. So it has, uh, it is conceptually different compared to the original model. Now, what, has, uh, what is the requirement to have this? Is it even, uh, does it even make sense to talk about such a, uh, such a model? So we, of course, we know that during inflation, because of exponential expansion, if you have some decoupled degree of freedom, uh, like matter or radiation, it will dilute a very, very quick exponential. Therefore, in order to have some, uh, to be in a warm environment during inflation, we should continuously pump energy into this other sector. Uh, so there, there need, uh, needs to be this transfer of energy so that the energy density in this other sector that I just call it X for now, uh, even though it is a small compared to the total energy, it shouldn't dilute away. So it's, I say it's something over the epsilon and sclerol parameter, uh, which is a small, but it shouldn't decay very exponentially. Now, if we assume that we have thermalization, these particles interact with each other and with some temperature, uh, we also want this temperature, temperature to be much larger than the Hubble. Doesn't, uh, 
it's it's not clear what it means to talk about temperatures below harbor during inflation. So it should be a uh, warm environment, so temperatures are much larger than harbor. And we can uh, easily see that this is compatible with this requirement. So with the requirement that energy density in this other sector is much less than total energy density. Uh, maybe a good example here to, uh, to have in mind is uh, CMB. So we know the energy density in uh, radiation today in the CMB photons is of order 10 to minus four of the total energy density in the universe. However, CMB temperature is much larger than the energy scale associated to the Hubble parameter. So it is uh, in principle possible to realize it in terms of energy budget. Um, now, if we realize it, then there will be some effects. So what are the effects? Uh, some effects are on the background evolution. So one is that since we are taking every energy from infant, there will be an extra um, friction term on the motion of the infant. Uh, and then this, uh, this friction term will also uh, in implies that we have a source for the energy density in this other sector, which I assume it is some radiation. So this is uh, just what I was talking about. Uh, and uh, this system of equations now it can have a warm uh, attractor solution, which is given a potential, it would be a different uh, background solution compared to the case in which we didn't have uh, this friction term. So it changes the background evolution and therefore, Given a potential, at least because of this, it can change the predictions of the model. Uh, in particular, if gamma is much larger than H, the conditions on the potential to have a slow roll inflation would be mild. We don't, uh, even the steeper potentials can have, give rise to inflation. But uh, even more importantly, uh, it changes, as I mentioned at the beginning, it, ch it changes the origin of fluctuations. So this process of transfer of energy that uh, I mentioned, it's not going to be something completely homogeneous. It is a microscopic process that happens uh, with some characteristic scale, perhaps of order of uh, inverse temperature. And uh, because of this, uh, and we think of that something that is happening randomly, so this random transfer of energy would mean that you will produce uh, not only a back reaction on the background, but also fluctuations. And these fluctuations of the influx and caused by this process would be, uh, uh, can be, generically there will be, if this uh, process is efficient, uh, efficient enough, it can be much bigger than vacuum fluctuations. So now we have infraton field that is already highly excited about, uh, uh, about this vacuum, highly excited means that it is essentially classical. So what would be the origin of cosmology of relations with the classical, uh, classical fluctuations of infraton that already exist inside the horizon. Uh, now, uh, you might worry that this uh, leads to a very non gaussian uh, 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 fluctuations. However, since uh, we are assuming that temperature is much larger than Hubble parameter, there will be many, many processes that contribute. And then by central limit theorem, it turns out to be that the result becomes uh, to a very good approximation Gaussian, but not perfectly Gaussian. And that's exactly uh, what we are aiming at. We want to uh, understand this non Gaussianity. And we should also remember that we are very sensitive to non Gaussianity. So we can measure deviations from non Gaussianity over 10 to minus three or four. Um, Okay, so now uh, having said that they, this idea is very old, but uh, there has been challenges. Uh, and until recently, it wasn't, at least to me and many others, it wasn't clear that it could uh, be realized uh, in, some, um, in some reasonable model. So what is the challenge? 
let me consider, let's consider some examples. So we want to have this extra sector and we want to copy infrared on the, to this extra sector. So now we, uh, I give just one, uh, one example. Let's imagine that this uh, infrared is coupled to some operator that lives in this other sector uh, made of the fields in this uh, uh, X uh, uh, field theory. And uh, I now, as an example, I can say this to be a dimension five coupling. So there is a dimension full parameter in this interaction, and we want to be a final temperature. But since this is a non renormalized interaction, it, for this description to make sense, temperature should be much less than. Now, if we have an inter, uh, interaction like this, generically, it produces a thermal mass for the inflat, and that will be just by dimension analysis of order m square will be of order t to the force divided by f square. And by dimension analysis, the friction coefficient that we get will be t cubed divided by f square. So uh, what happens is that uh, since t is uh, much less than f, we see that this uh, gamma, the friction will be much less than the thermal mass that we have for the inflat. On the other hand, the thermal mass that we get should be much smaller than Hubble in order to have inflation. In fact, I feel that not have a mass much bigger than the Hubble, uh, which means that gamma should be much less than Hubble. And when gamma is much less than Hubble, the effect of this uh, friction turn that we get on the background evolution would be negligible. Uh, moreover, now I said two conceptual differences, both at the level of background and the fluctuations. Moreover, we can also see that the fluctuations, if we are in this uh, generic situation, also the effect on fluctuations would be negligible. Uh, why? Because again, uh, tip, if the typical value of the thermal ma mass is squared is t to the four over f squared, then this is our gamma t. And then the fluctuations, the thermal fluctuations that we induce for the inflaton field by uh, fluctuation dissipation theorem can be estimated to be of this order, h squared gamma t over phi dot squared. So this gamma t uh, under this assumption will be of order of m thermal square. And then if m thermal square is less than h squared, then these thermal fluctuations will be much less than the vacuum fluctuations. So no important effect on the background and no important effect on the fluctuations. Um, okay, so now uh, what was the, what changed this and uh, the story? What was the, uh, uh, what was the scenario that realized warm inflation? This is a proposal called minimal warm inflation. Uh, by these authors, uh, which uh, consider inflaton field to be coupled uh, to Jan Mills theory at final temperature. So inflaton field now here is assumed to be uh, something like an axion field, and this is the uh, the, the standard coupling of inflaton to Yang Mills. And in this case. Uh, it's well known that the mass that is produced for the axion or inflaton via this coupling, it is uh, going to be only by a non perturbative effects, and therefore at weak coupling, it is going to be small. Uh, basically, because uh, at the perturbative level, this interaction is a derivative, it can be written as a derivative interaction. And therefore, perturbatively, you will never produce a mass. But of course, it's not really a derivative because, um, because there will be uh, large, uh, uh, that, that if we write it as a derivative, then there will be, it's written as an operator that is not gauge invariant on the large gauge transform. So in reality, it's not really a uh, total derivative. So there will be a mass then that is. Uh, at weak coupling, it is exponentially suppressed. In terms of temperature, um, uh, when we are much higher than the, so Yang means has some critical temperature, like 
analogous to lambda QCD, when we are at temperatures much larger than critical, that critical temperature, then the coupling parameter of Yang is very really small because it is asymptotically free. And the mass term that is produced is going to be suppressed by a large power uh, of uh, inverse temperature. Uh, or critical temperature divided by inverse temperature. So this mass squared does not have the typical value that I was guessing, I was uh, using before. But the friction coefficient does have the typical value up to a power loss operation in alpha. Uh, and this is coming from this tolerance that I'm going to say a few words about. Uh, you put plot here is pseudo scalar. So with the fluctuations parity? Uh, yeah, there would be some parity violence, but it appears at some very suppressed level. Of course, as you know, you can only see them in the four-point correlation function, and also there it is, uh, it's, it's, it, it can be there, but it is not very big. So it's about on F, basically. Uh, what one? What? I didn't understand it. I guess, uh, yeah, the question is in principle, there was a detection, alleged detection of sorry, <laughs> relation. This is not the ratio half over, right? Uh, no, no, because in this, if you Take that the match that detection for what this model is uh, predicting, then its non Gaussianity will be like uh, ridiculously large. Like FNL, I don't know, thousand, ten thousand. So you would just see it by eye that it is non Gaussian. Um, yes. So so what is this following heating? Um, the following heating is based on the following very interesting idea. So in Yang Mills, or any theory that has instantons, there are uh, real-time configurations in the field space that start from vacuum and go to vacuum, but they are not uh, deformable to a trivial configuration in which we are sitting at the vacuum. What is the analogy? The analogy is to consider a pendulum that can rotate around and come back to the uh, bottom equilibrium point. So these uh, turns, they are tolerance in the case of this pendulum. As you see, there are two kinds of them. They, they have some handedness. Uh, now, uh, in Yang means there is this, uh, there is this GG dual operator that I introduced before. And uh, this is counting the number of these spiral processes that are happening if I integrate it over time. Uh, of course, if I'm at zero temperature, they don't happen. Like this pendulum is not going to just jump around at zero temperature. But at final temperature, it is going to turn around once in a while randomly. Similarly, in Yang means we can have these processes. Uh, and therefore, this charge data is just counting the number of its tolerance with the sine plus or minus one is going to act like a random one. Its average is zero, but then uh, its variance is going to linearly increase with time. The coefficient, the diffusion coefficient is a measurable quantity of. Uh, Yang Mills, uh, and it's called the Svalon ray. So if I have pure Yang Mills, then it's going to be something I will alpha to the fifth to times t to the fourth if I'm at high temperature. Okay, so now what we are doing in this model is that we are having in uh, writing five times five times this trace GG dual. Uh, in this uh, analogy with the pendulum, this is equivalent to adding a four when is a non-zero phi dot, then it's equivalent to adding a force to this pendulum. This creates a bias in the, uh, the spotterons, between the spotterons with one-handedness and the other, and therefore the expectation value 
will no longer be zero, will be proportional to phi dot. And, uh, okay, the coefficient of proportionality is fixed by this fluctuation dissipation theorem, fixed in terms of the variance that we had as in the absence of phi dot. Of course, here I'm assuming a small response, a linear response there. So I am assuming that this ex external force that I'm adding is a small correction. Uh, okay, so once I have this bias, as in the case of pendulum, once I produce a bias, every time I have a turn that is aligned with the torque that I'm exerting, I am injecting some energy and every time it is uh, anti-aligned, I am absorbing energy. So once there is a bias between the two, there will be a net uh, flux of energy into, um, into the yang means plasma. So this gamma phi dot is square and the friction term in the equation of motion for the inflow. So this, now this is the macroscopic scenario that realizes nicely warm inflation. The corrections to the potential, as I mentioned, are very small at high temperature. But this system does have a, um, does have a slow roll attractor. Um, and then again, if gamma is much bigger than H, then the slow roll conditions can, can be uh, relaxed a little. Uh, now, what are these dots? Maybe the, this is the only new thing for Mark. Um, so, the, uh, so there is a process that happens in um, this Yamis plasma that has so far been overlooked also by us in the paper that I mentioned. So this is like the new, uh, new ongoing work that I mentioned. So there, uh, in this Yamis plasma, even if I'm that are at zero velocity for phi dot, there will be just thermal productions of uh, inflators because of that coupling that I have. So even if, uh, say, I'm at weak coupling, then there will be this um, perturbative processes that produce inflators. And the rate for uh, production or absorption of these inflators that whose typical energy would be of order temperature. Here I'm saying A because uh, it's usually discussed in the context of QCD axiom. Um, the typical rate for this, uh, for coming from this perturbative diagram would be this. So compare this with the slalom array, you see that the slalom uh, was, there's some non-perturbative process, so there were have extra factors of alpha compared to this uh, perturbative process. Um, and, uh, okay, so now uh, this process is, uh, uh, what, what does it do? Maybe let me give you some background about the case of QCD. So in the case of QCD action, you can also have a similar, uh, there is a similar situation. QCD is uh, now it is the young miss sector that we have. And during thermal history, it is at, uh, in thermal equilibrium. And then if you have a QCD axiom, then uh, there will be this process of production and absorption of axioms. Now, if the rate of this process is much bigger than Hubble, like at the early times, then the QCD axiom will be in thermal equilibrium. But then at some point, uh, this, this rate decreases and at some point it, it decouples. This decoupling is actually something that has been studied a lot to understand the uh, contribution of accents to an effective. Uh, okay, so now here, uh, why is it important for us? Uh, if, if this rate is not much bigger than Hubble, meaning that if this thermally produced axiom, this gas of axiom that I uh, uh, inflatons that I have, if they are not in thermal equilibrium, then uh, the amount of production and absorption that I have uh, of these inflatons would not cancel each other. So there will be a net sink of energy uh, from uh, Yang-Mis plasma going into this inflat. So this equation, background equation will be modified. In particular, 
Yeah, absorption rate will be suppressed because the number density is small. When gamma is less than x, because it hasn't reached thermal equilibrium. So more or less this difference is of order of the rate times rho. And therefore, when this rate uh, is of order of Hubble, you see that this term becomes of order of something that I already have in the equation. So it becomes a dominant correction. Another thing to mention is that alpha in this uh, scenario, if we want to be realistic, cannot be too small. So in a sense, this gamma and that gamma are not too different from each other. So the option is that when little, my little gamma is of order h, I have a new process. Um, and that has a dominant effect. Uh, moreover, if alpha is not too small, then this means I have to understand well this UV process, uh, this thermal scale process of in production of inflatons to be able to make predictions for the cosmological perturbations. And if alpha is not too small, that is a hard problem. So at the end of the day, uh, we, I'd be happy to discuss it more, but it turns out that uh, in the range that when this gamma or that gamma is of order of H, we are essentially having some strong coupling phenomena in this model. And I don't know exactly what are the predictions here. Perhaps some qualitative features are going to be going to survive, but uh, quantitatively, it's hard to predict. So everything I'm going to say after what would be away from the window when gamma is of order H. Any question about this? Sure, maybe it's not the term. Presumably, you disrupt the background evolution already. That's normal. Is it a regime where it's not the would it significantly back react on the potential? That's normal. You can probably read out that it's just from simple considerations. Well, it significantly affects the background because. Uh, yes, there is a significant effect on the background, but it does not mean that you necessarily destroy its overall process. That you still be scared of approximately scale invariant and things like this. Yeah, the the scale invariance would come from the fact that if you if the uh, if you have an approximate time translation invariance in the problem, so that essentially determined by the slope of the potential. If you're slowly rolling, so you have approximate, the approximate time translation symmetry, then you will automatically get the scaling variance. Um, you, might worry, you might be worried about non-Gaussianity, but even that doesn't seem to be big. So it's, a, it's an interesting situation in which the correlation functions are hard to compute because you need to have control over the thermal scale physics and hard to have control when alpha is not too small. But because it is some microscopic process that is contributing to your long wavelength perturbations, just by central linear theorem, you will get an, an approximate Gaussian result. So the expectation is that it is nearly Gaussian. It's just hard to compute without understanding what's going on at energies over the, the temperature. Okay, since you mentioned this, um, so as far as the inflaton sector is concerned, it's not necessarily the potential something that we don't. Um, do anything about like you just have to assume it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're saying that this process for the QCD axiom is understood? And uh, it's understood first conceptually, yes. Okay. The second quantitative, uh, quantitative only understood a V coupling when alpha is small or below the QCD phase transition using the Carla-Lagrange. Yeah. But then if you go near the, when alpha is near one, near the uh, QCD phase transition, then no, actually it's a, there's a big uncertainty of, on the N effective exactly because of that. Okay. 
was an internal corrections to the involved potential, they're small. Uh -huh. This is something that is it obvious here. Uh, it's, it's just the fact that the this coupling that I'm writing is uh, not breaking shift sim it breaks shift symmetry on, only in unperturbatively by an instant of but it's the uh, right, it's the usual uh, situation with axioms. Perturbatively, they have a shift symmetry, but on a non perturbative it's broke. Therefore, the corrections are suppressed by exponential one over alpha or in the low temperature by a high power of one over T, Tc over T. Okay. Uh, but now I'm not going to talk about this anymore. So go back to the simple situation. So uh, we want to understand perturbations in this model because that's what we really observe and uh, used to constrain inflationary models. So we need to understand the uh, this, we need to be able to describe cosmological perturbations in this model. So perturbation with wavelengths of order hub, which is a, a much longer wavelength compared to the temperature, the scale, inverse temperature. At those scales, yang uh, plasma is described by, uh, by fluid. So its degree of freedom will be phonons of that fluid. And then uh, up to corrections of order alpha, not too small, but Okay, now here the simplification that I make, or assumption that I make is that it's approximately a radiation fluid. Um, so this will be the description of these phonons of Yang Mills, and these are coupled to inflaton uh, via this, uh, this operator. That again, if I want to describe it in terms of the uh, long wavelength modes, it has this expectation value. That was giving me the uh, friction term. Now I have written it in a covariant form. It's a friction term that is should be understood something given the rest frame of the fluid. And then in, on top of that, there will be a noise. Uh, the small fluctuations of uh, this operator that I have. And then the same operator will couple the two equations to get. Of course, then there will be dots here that have uh, uh, there will be effect of thermal inflaton production would appear here, and then there will be this associated noise that would also function. Okay, this system without those corrections was uh, actually uh, constructed even before the invention of minimal warm inflation, because as you see here, the ideas are very general. general. It's, a, it's an effective field theory that doesn't uh, depend much on the details of what was the microscopic process. So, so we need some radiation to describe that, uh, that extra sector and inflaton is coupled to that. Uh, now, in order to be able to make predictions for cosmological observables, which let me just mention this uh, zeta parameter that we usually use to describe the scalar perturbations is related to the perturbations of inflaton. And in order to make predictions for that, we need to know something about the correlation functions of the noise that I was writing, because otherwise it's just, a, uh, it's just a, an unknown and wouldn't be able to make predictions. So what do we know about the noise? Strictly speaking, we know it's two-point function in the limit of k and omega going to zero. That was the definition of this following ray. Uh, now, of course, it's continuous. So one should ask what is the range of the scales over which this is a good, good approximation. So what, 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 does it, what does it mean to say k and omega going to zero? What is the characteristic of scale that? Uh, the term is that, and the conventional wisdom is that these solarons are processes which have a size of order uh, one over alpha t. So that should be this case. Yeah, I'm talking about distances much bigger than one over alpha t, then 
this uh, estimate for the, this should be a good uh, estimate for the two point function of the noise. And also when, when we are in the limit and alpha is small, then uh, if you remember this is when rate was going as alpha to the fifth times t to the fourth, which means that this is environments, if they have a size of order one over alpha t, they are actually well separate. So in this limit, uh, we can describe this noise as going as being a superposition of two Poisson random processes. One with one handedness, one right handed and left handed. So with rate gamma plus and gamma minus, so that the, uh, uh, the sum of the two becomes a total spiral rate, but there is a bias between the two because we have this phi dot term. So, for instance, here I had these dots with different colors. So, the one, one of them should think of them as being the right handed ones and the other ones are the le left handed ones. And then, because of phi dot, I have more green ones here than the red. Uh, okay, so in this uh, in this limit, if I'm if I can I have this dilute gas of the spirals, then the correlation functions of this noise at distances larger than that characteristic distance can be uh, can be expressed at, for at all orders um, in terms of this gamma. So I get something like that delta function correlation because. Of course, this delta function should be thought of as being a smear delta functions over that characteristic distance. Um, and okay, so this becomes relatively predictive, uh, or looks like. Uh, now, if I had uh, larger values of alpha when this dilute gas approximation is not a very good approximation, then, um, then perhaps uh, this higher order uh, points will be will change, so the coefficients here should be considered as parameters to be new parameters that uh, one has to let them uh, let them be free, uh, or depends on the details of UV. So if one wants to be agnostic about what's going on at the microscopic scale, then that, that should be free coefficients. Uh, however, even in that case. This uh, one would expect that this is a good estimate of the size of even higher point correlation function. So something that is determined by the microscopic scale, the power, powers are all, uh, it's essentially dimensional analysis. So perhaps all the one coefficient that can diff. Okay, so now with this, uh, given this noise correlators, one can hope that. Uh, one, one can compute the correlation functions of cosmological perturbations, which are perturbations with wavelengths of order inverse Hubble or larger. Now, it's not actually totally obvious that it is this kind of work because, uh, of course, in uh, during inflation, every mode that we consider it stretches from the UV very high energies or momenta up to the cosmological distance. And then there is a range when we don't, uh, we don't want to make many assumptions about or we don't know how to do exact computations. So uh, in order for this effective field theory that I wrote, which was the description here for long wavelength mode to be valid or to be predictive, it should be that some of the contribution coming from here is much bigger than the contribution coming from those microscopic And so now this becomes a more uh, quantitative question, depends on the profile of the noise that I have or the particular correlation function that we are looking at. But it turns out, for instance, for two-point function and three-point function for lower the correlation functions, it is indeed the case that we are dominated by excitations that are happening here. Uh, so for instance, one thing to keep in mind is that at the thermal scale, you the occupations not occupation numbers that you can get typically is of order one. So if it turns out that 
These excitations that are produced in here have a much larger occupation number than one, then you're guaranteed that uh, you're dominated by what's happening here. So it, this is indeed the case for the two-point function. Again, the caveat is the regime when gamma is of order h. That's when something in the UV is actually making an important contribution. But away from gamma of order h, it is a very predictive EFT. And OK, so now let me show you some application of this. Um, so now we can take like some our favorite potential, inflationary potential, and ask what happens if we not do warm inflation. I mean, it's like say if I take five to the fourth. I chose five to the fourth because five squared didn't work, not because I prefer five to the fourth. Um, so if we take five to the fourth with this particular choice of uh, friction term. Then, uh, so let me just say that if you can say cold inflation, then five to the four will be somewhere here. So it's completely ruled out. Uh, but with this choice, in the case of warm inflation, with this choice, then it's, uh, it comes right in the middle of the uh, NSR diagram. So typically, what happens is that um, tensor to scale ratio in this model is going to be super small because there is a new contribution to the scalar perturbations, this term of fluctuations, while the tensor perturbations uh, again away from this range gamma over gamma over the edge, they're dominated by vacuum fluctuations. So R is going to be very small. Um, so for instance, the fact that M is squared, phi squared doesn't work is not because in warm inflation, it's not because R is big. R is very small, but it doesn't give the right tilt. And it turns out that for any value of gamma over H, the tilt uh, that we get in a square phi square would be much more uh, blue. Okay, so any questions? For any shallower potential, it always goes to the right. Yeah, it, it prefers more uh, convex potential. Oh, I should say that again, this window gamma where the H is to me is an unknown. So, in principle, maybe in the file squared works in that window. That's the uh, correct theory of the universe. Uh, okay, but of course we don't know what was the inflationary potential. So this is not is an, was a nice exercise, but at the end of the day, to understand whether or not we have warm inflation, we have to find some signature, distinct signature of the model, and that is uh, in the non gaussianity uh, So uh, usually since the zeta parameter, these fluctuations that we are talking about are tiny. It is uh, easier to look for the lowest order non-oceanity, which means the three-point function. Unless for some reason it is zero and the higher order ones are bigger, but here it's not the case. So here there is no uh, three-point function. is indeed the best uh, prediction of the model. And it is common to and normalize it in terms of this ratio, so divided by two power spectra, and talk about this FNL function here, or FNL parameter that is evaluated, say, at, when the moment are all the same. Uh, and there are uh, two different uh, sources of non-Gaussianity in this model. Uh, one of them is coming from the fact that uh, the noise that I described was itself non Gaussian. It wasn't, it was a, say, a Poisson uh, noise. Uh, so that has a, gives a contribution to non Gaussian that we can just estimate in terms of the number of events that contribute to a particular uh, cosmological mode. Uh, this is just using central limit theorem. And then uh, also using the fact that there was some suppression of the odd correlators because of uh, 
but it's fine. That was zero. The, the hand, the tolerance with two handedness would be would have equal rate. So okay, so there will be but this is one contribution to non-oceanity. And it is guaranteed to be small as long as temperature is much larger than H. Of course, it's small by itself doesn't mean that it's uninteresting. We are after small corrections. There is another contribution which comes from the fact that this hydro description that I have is intrinsically nonlinear. So for instance, if I expand this in terms of perturbation, there will be second order corrections to these equations. And then there will be a contribution to the young oceanic that I call 211. It is correlating a second order perturbation with two first order one. This kind of non-oceanity is completely fixed by the, this ratio gamma over H. So it's completely fixed by this system that I have already written, whose only parameter at this order that I'm discussing is just gamma over H. And it turns out that this second, in the range of parameters that uh, are interesting for gamma over H, which is a very big range of gamma over H, small and big, this, uh, this type of non oceanity is always bigger than the other one. Okay, so uh, let me just, as an, as an example, show um, the amplitude of this FNL parameter as a, um, as a function of gamma over H. So uh, this three-point function is, uh, because of translation invariance is, it's of course a function of three momenta, but the three momenta make a triangle because of translation And uh, its FNL only depends on the shape of the triangle. If we ignore the floral correction, uh, there will be scale invariance. Um, so here I'm just focusing on a triangle, uh, an equilateral triangle, and uh, plotting the amplitude of that particular ratio, three point function divided by the two power spectra. So now we see that these values that we get, they are indeed not uh, uh, non negligible, meaning that so we should be thinking about uh, FNL, the constraints that we have today are uh, say between five to about 50 or so. So this is the ballpark that we can uh, constrain. And then this uh, model predicts something inside that ball. Uh, of course, you need to have a part more detailed understanding of the shape of this function that we are getting to distinguish. So it's common to use some monomials that are simple functions to uh, match it or search for them in the data. Uh, one of the famous ones that have been uh, used a lot is the equilateral template. And it turns out to match well with the shape that we get in this model in uh, some large range of parameters when gamma is less than H. And when gamma is much bigger than H, or not even much bigger, but to start, uh, when gamma is bigger than H, then this would not be a very good template. So there is an, another one that matches much better. And here I show the correlations between these various changes and the templates that uh, are introduced. So for with the equilateral template, we have large anti-correlation up to gamma over H over the one, but then it becomes a small. On the other hand, this new template has a small correlation and then it has uh, a small gamma over H, but then it has order one correlation at large gamma over H. The other type of non gaussianity coming from the Poisson statistics of the noise that would uh, always have good correlation with the equilaterals. And then the amplitudes of this um, are, um, so you can see here, this is the amplitude of the equilateral one, it is big, kind of order 10 or larger. Uh, at the small values of gamma over H. And then as it goes down, the other amplitude of the new warm uh, template rises to something up to about 40. So in the most range of parameters, it's 
um, the amplitude is kind of bigger than one. Now, the existing constraints on equilateral non-Gaussianity as a net equilateral is, I think, about 50 or so. So still, we, we cannot exclude any regime of this parameter. It might be that the, the existing data are already good enough to constrain this part of the parameters just because the new, this other template has not been studied. So it is in principle possible to look for it. So this is the other change for her. Mark. This should be discovery. Uh, okay, so um, yeah, maybe I mentioned just some more um, analytic features of this non Gaussianity that we get. So the, there is this. Uh, limit of, so as I mentioned, this um, non Gaussianity three point correlation function is a function that depends on the shape of the triangle that we have. So it is, it is useful often to look at the uh, dependence of this function as we consider squeeze triangles when one of the sizes become much smaller than the other one. Because this dependence often has interesting information about the qualitative physics that describes inflation. Uh, so um, in this model, in particular, if you have single models of inflation, this, uh, in this limit, the, this FNL function that I define goes to zero, and it goes to zero as K, K1 scale over K2 scale. So this is like the universal feature single field inflation that we would, and so one thing that we would like to test to see if it is uh, not obeyed, then we are ruling out single field inflation. So here the limit is still zero because we actually don't have any other long-lived degree of freedom uh, except inflation. However, also it is not a single field. There are also the hydro degrees of freedom. They decay outside the horizon. So therefore the limit is, strict limit is zero, but the limit is approached in different ways in this model. In particular, when gamma is much less than H, since one of the hydro modes decays as one over A, then the limit is approached as K1 over K2 rather than K1 squared over K2 squared. And when gamma over H is much bigger than H, there's a window in, within which the modes have some uh, growth, there's some window of instability, essentially. And then within that window, the, the, the squeeze limit doesn't actually decay. It behaves more like the, um, uh, what is called a local shape of non Gaussian. With the difference that it also has some angular dependence, some quadrupolar behavior. So this is this is a regime when also this new template that I mentioned is better described in the model. So it, again, it seems that here there is a window at this where you have a qualitative difference with the normal inflation A bonds. Uh, okay, so that's it. To conclude, I, um, I argue that warm inflation can be realized in this model or reviewed using a small run heating. It predicts FNLs that uh, are um, promising uh, that might be, uh, we might be able to uh, detect or constrain. Uh, then there is this uh, range uh, of uh, gamma of order H, and there is this new process that I didn't say much about. Uh, in this range, uh, the predictions have to be revisited. Perhaps some of them will change. Perhaps there are new shapes of non Gaussianity within that window um, based on the new form of the noise that we are getting due to this particle production. Within the same regime, you would expect that you have larger emission of gravitational waves from this process of inflaton production. So here is the case then, in principle, we can have even low scale inflation with maybe observable R, 
not so shock. Just to say that estimates would say that uh, it should go as epsilon square, but in warm inflation, when we consider low low scale inflation, for those who for the experts, I think they know that R usually goes as epsilon. And in low scale inflation, epsilon is very small, so R is negligible. Here it goes as epsilon is squared, but for low scale inflation, epsilon does not have to be very small because the power spectrum is not coming from vacuum fluctuations. So in principle, this might uh, be observable. Uh, then, okay, there are other, other proposals for getting particle production during inflation, like for instance, copying inflagrant to, a, to an abelian gauge fee via FF2 rather than non abelian one. So there are qualitative differences between the two. For instance, in the abelian case, there is no scholar. Uh, but it's, uh, it's interesting to see if it, also in those models we can achieve some thermalization if we have uh, interactions. It would be interesting to see what is the basin of attraction of this warm inflation that we have here based on swarms. It is no, we know that it is a local attractor, but we don't know like with what range of initial conditions we will go into that regime. Uh, then uh, it's a question of converting the energy in this radiation into a standard model, reheating into a standard model, and of course, finding the shapes of non gaussianity in the relation with gamma over H uh, is of order one. Now, those would be interesting questions to answer. Thanks. Are there any questions? How large are these local time uh, in this model? So you mentioned the alerts are what? Uh, the local time back and now. How uh -huh. much last curves? Yeah. F0 and F1, F2, uh -huh. are your dependence is yeah. uh, are these functions are already in some parameter regime are, are these functions are excluded already? Uh-huh. Or um yeah, let's see. Um, well, I would say it is order one, but uh, yeah, I don't think exactly. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't know the precise uh, numerical value. For sure, it's going to be order one. Just because here, everything in that regime gamma was larger than H, there is no parameter suppressing. Non gaussianity, so it should be order one, but okay, order one could be also 40. Okay. But yeah, it's a good question to ask uh, whether just looking at that regime is, uh, is useful. But the caveat is that although, say, this parameter is Maybe B says 10, for instance, which is above the current constraint on local non gaussianity. Once we keep in mind it, that just there is just the window of K1 over K2 in which you have this behavior. So you cannot just stretch it or squeeze it arbitrarily. So what should they be careful applying the existing constraint on the local angle set? What sets the window? It's the same gamma over H. Uh, H. Because it's the same gamma over H. So there's a window of, there's a window of instability starting from the square root of H gamma up to horizon crossing. Within this range, the modes are grown. And then in this window, if you are stretched within this window, you will have uh, this behavior. Any more questions? If not, let's thank you.